call their own home buyer leads. So I remember that. So that is number one, phone calls, either receptionist duties, follow-up calls, appointment setting calls, warm calls, cold calling, name it. That is, you know, typically the number one tasks that loan officers would delegate to a virtual assistant. Number two. Hey, 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 loan officers, welcome to Loan Officer Growth Podcast, the podcast that helps loan officer grow their business, increase their success, and have more freedom. How are you doing, Gerard? Hey, everybody, Gerard Arbolita is an awesome, awesome person. He is co-founder of Remote Assistant Scout. He is a dear, dear friend of mine. And uh, how are you doing, Gerard? How, how's everything going? Hey, I'm great, Richard. And I'm here live in the Philippines. Awesome. Thank you. How, how are, are you? you? I'm good. How long? Wow. How long have we known each other? Mm, we've known each other since August of 2012. So it has been 11 years of working together. That's crazy. Yeah, that is so crazy. So I, and and I know a lot of people that are listening know who you are. You're you're like a legend here in no. finding the best virtual assistants in the Philippines. Um but we'll kind of go real general like what what um what is a virtual assistant? For for those yes. that are listening that may mm -hmm. not know. So just before I answer the question, you know, 99% um, of the clients that, you know, we cater are loan officers. And typically this is one of the most um, common questions that they ask if, if indeed this is their first time, you know, hearing about virtual assistant, hearing about the industry. So basically as a virtual assistant is, you know, somebody who's working remotely, who could handle admin tasks for you, phone calls, anything that can be done online. So that could be like from other state or that could be from other countries for as long as it is on a remote setup. So that is why it's called virtual. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So having somebody remote, somebody that, that doesn't have to be in your office working, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And that is one of the reasons why, you know, some people or some businesses, you know, opt to um, hiring virtual assistant because number one, you know, um, it's cheap labor. Other than that, you know, they don't have to spend with technology or having, you know, an additional space um, for a regular employee. But, it's, you know, to each his own, it's a face to face basis. There are people who would like, who would love to, you know, or who loves working with virtual assistants and there are people also would really prefer a regular employee. Right. But if you're leaning towards, you know, the pr practicality of it and then, you know, the virtual assistant might be for you. Yeah. And you, you made a point, cheap labor and it, a lot of people get mixed up that they feel like, you know, if I'm paying a virtual assistant $5 or $6 an hour, that's not really fair for the virtual assistant, but we, you know, we look at our virtual assistants that we hire are in the Philippines and mm -hmm. it's very different cost of living there, right? Yes. Thank you so much for pointing that out. So it's really um, a win to win situation because um, $5 per hour offer is really more than decent. Um, if you're going to think about it, um, minimum wage here in the Philippines is kind of like $3, $3 to $6 per day. That is not per hour, per day. Wow. That is minimum. And if you're a starting professional, like on a professional level, we can do, like, I guess, around 10 to 12 hours per day if you're a starting professional. So wow. that is the standard um, compensation here in contrast to working online that you could get a $5 offer or $5 per hour offer, $7 per hour offer. And if you're working full-time, then... Basically, um, let's see, let's do the math here. So you're earning like $42 per day, which is, you know, more than decent, especially if you're starting. That's crazy. And, and the other benefit for the virtual assistants is they get to work from home so they don't have to commute. 
They don't, mm-hmm. they have the privacy of working out of their home. So there's no distractions. Yeah. It's, it's, mm-hmm. that's amazing. Yeah. So, so working for five to $6 an hour, it just like, like that's really, really good pay. And so a lot of people get confused with that. That is very accurate that, you know, um, I think uh, 80% or let's say 70 to 80% of our virtual assistants or, you know, those um, aspiring virtual assistants or mothers or parents uh, who would love to, you know, um, transition from corporate to working online because of the benefits of, you know, just working at home, you don't have to commute, it's cheaper, you get to spend time with your family. Um, Time-wise, it's very practical because, you know, you can just get up. 15 minutes before your show. In contrast to working corporate that, you know, depending on the traffic, you need to be commuting for like two to three hours per day. So it's really, um, you know, more practical to work at home. And it is an emerging market given that, you know, we've had COVID. So there was a surge of, you know, of aspiring virtual assistants since 2020. Right. Yeah. And, and many, if not most of the virtual assistants that, that we hire through remote assistant scout are college graduates, they're professionals. Mm -hmm. So they're in, they have experience like in, in Mm -hmm. the tasks that most loan officers want their virtual assistant do. So speaking of that, what, what do most loan officers want a virtual assistant for what kind of tasks and and strategies do you you see i i could actually give you the top three so number one is really doing some phone calls so phone calls it could be appointment setting to realtors appointment setting um to or appointment setting with home buyers that could be new present or past um they could also be working with realtors who's you know and having them call their home buyer leads because it's a win-win situation, just like you did before. Yep. <laughs> so there, there was a time that, you know, it was a slow market, I guess. And then, you know, you were working with this five-star realtors and you had me call their own home buyer leads. So I remember that. So that is the number one phone calls, either receptionist duties, follow-up calls, appointment setting calls, warm calls, cold calling, name it. That is, you know, typically the number one tasks that loan officers would delegate to a virtual assistant. Number two is really on the CRM management. I know how you guys or how busy you guys can get that you can't keep track of everyone. Is everyone in your CRM? Is everything accurate in terms of the data that's being, you know, put into um either your CRM, your Excel spreadsheet, and that's where the virtual assistant could come in and, you know, organize those for you. And basically what we did before, you know, I'm just going to speak per experience that I remember that whenever, you know, a new lead comes in and then it's like an automatic thing that, you know, I send them an email, I'll call them like five minutes or within five minutes, we receive the lead, right? That was your instruction. And then after that, you know, we go ahead and add them into their CRM, put them into the right category, adding them into the right email trip campaign and, you know, do some follow up, follow up calls, follow up emails, either manually or being automated by the CRM. So that is number two. And number three is really on the digital marketing spectrum. So it's either doing some social media or doing some video editing for you. If you guys are into TikToks or into um, video marketing and your social media platforms, YouTube, Instagram Reels, Facebook Reels. So those are the top three. However, you know, we've had loan officers that hired, you know, virtual assistants that could actually help them organize um, leads during the loan process. And also, you know, follow up with the leads for as long as they are compliant with their company. Right. Because, yeah, you, you know, I've worked, I've worked with mortgage bankers and they're a lot more, you know, stricter in terms of, you know, doing this thing. So that is another question, by the way. So I'm a mortgage banker and, you know, basically, you know, we cannot give access 
um, of our CRM or, or have of our data to the virtual assistant. So what is the alternative? So we've had this system we're in, you know, um, that could be put into, you know, an Excel spreadsheet or maybe um, a Google spreadsheet, so at least it's online. It will be a lot easier for you guys to track. You don't need to, you know, send out Excel files back and forth, you know what I mean? So that is the alternative of just having a separate file or a separate sheet um, for the virtual assistant to access, you know, the names, um, the phone numbers, as well as, you know, the email addresses. Right. You made a couple really good points to the, the videos. Like if you're a loan officer out there and you do videos, the really cool thing back in the day, um, 10 years ago when Gerard was my virtual assistant, uh, I remember all I really had to do was record the video and everything else got taken care of that, you know, you or, mm. or other virtual assistants would do. So I just record it and upload it. And then the video gets edited. It gets sent out. It, it goes on all the different social media. Um, so it's, for me, it was automated. So there was a, a standard operating procedure and SOP for what would happen once, let's say you get the video. So it's, it's as much as a loan officer can do to automate their business and focus on money-making activities and prospecting. So all the, all that, uh, type of work gets taken care of in the background, which that's the virtual assistant doing. And then you you said um, really what the number one strategy or task that loan officers are having their virtual assistants do is making phone calls and import more importantly um, calling real estate agents to set appointments. So cold calling. I I know most loan officers do not enjoy doing that. Um, and if they do, they only do it for X amount of time. So it might even be an hour or two hours a week. Um, but when you have a virtual assistant doing that, you could have them call two hours a day and schedule 10, 15 appointments a week with new real estate agents. And, you know, that alone will grow somebody's business very, very fast. So yeah, that's, that was some good stuff. Do you, you know, you, you named three and we have a, a document. So anybody listening today, um, comment below and we will send you the document that has over 130 tasks that a loan officer yeah. can have a virtual assistant do. So you, you named three of the top, but there's still mm -hmm. literally a hundred more tasks that loan officers have their virtual assistant do. Do you, Anything else you can think of off the top of your head that most loan officers are having their VAs do? Um, yeah, so I guess, you know, some other loan officers would um, really have like a closer virtual assistant. So when I say closer, you know, they take care of the closing activities, like, you know, sending out closing gifts or you may ask, how do the virtual assistant do that? And then, you know, maybe order from Amazon or order from, you know, um, online shops that you can actually think of or currently using. And then, you know, the virtual system could just take care of it for you. Or there's something for the delivery address and, you know, to send out um, to your client. Or maybe, you know, I'm um, sending out emails for um, review solicitation. So another phone call again. So that are those are the other things that they do or maybe setting up events. I remember... Because Richard does, you know, events for realtors. It's either, you know, a live workshop, um, a coffee meeting, um, or, you know, any other drive, like for Homes for Heroes, as far as I can remember. So um, the virtual assistant can come in and, you know, and helping you advertising um, the event, you know, inviting people to the event, sending out invites or emails and, you know, calling again to those who, who signed up and, you know, just give them the reminder and what have you or have them text the realtors or other guests. So there's a couple. Nice, nice. You know, yeah. And, and I just want to be clear on this, that again, you know, the general um, 
<clears throat> the general point here is that there are things or a lot of things or variety of tasks that a virtual assistant can do for you for as long as it is online. However, you know, we just need to make this clear that, of course, not everything can be done by one virtual assistant. Right. We're in the virtual assistant industry world, you know, our job is very dynamic. It's not really like a regular employee that there's a set of tasks that they're supposed to do. Because later, you know, for example, I've been doing phone calls for Richard now, and then maybe next week I've been doing the marketing for him. And maybe the um, the, the week after next, I'll be doing some blogging. <laughs> so um, their responsibilities really change. On I mean, change over time is very dynamic. However, you know, you just need to provide like, and a venue for them to learn. You can't expect them to know everything, but if you have the platform, um, if you have those resources for right. them to learn those new techniques, new strategies that you want to implement, and then please do so. Yeah, but for definitely them, you expect them to you know to know because you know I've encountered um, clients or loan officers because you know they're still in the process of getting to know the industry. You know what I mean? So this yep. kind of like the expectation that, for example, somebody's doing social media or a social media marketing strategist is like that, maybe because they're not comfortable doing some phone calls. The same with telemarketers or cold callers. You know, maybe they're boxed into that specific spectrum because, you know, they haven't had the opportunity to work with social media. Right. So... I yeah, they have di different perfect. ones have different strengths. And, and I, I always like to say, I'm always going to hire attitude over experience, because somebody with a great attitude and the ability to learn and teach themselves way, way outweighs maybe some experience that they've had. So yeah, you make a really good point. Let's kind of hit some different some of the top questions that loan officers have. Like, where, where do you find a virtual assistant? So we find or outsource virtual assistants here in the Philippines. So that is, you know, our main target market. However, we've had instances wherein, you know, we hired people from Jamaica, Guatemala. But really our niche is, I mean, our niche revolves around, you know, Filipino virtual assistants. Right. And so do, it's the other side of the world. So do hmm. the virtual assistants work our time or how do you, how do they how does that work yes 100 percent. so um we can just go back into the application process so whenever we post an ad there um we basically note that this client is from the united states so they know exactly that they'll be working on a graveyard ship like just like now here in philippines it's 9 26 p.m so right. we're working night time and most of our applicants or most of the virtual assistants in today's market have been a call center agent, which is kind of like a big industry here in Asia. Right. So when it, so when somebody worked from a call center agency, that means that they have been working on a graveyard ship. So that's kind of like their lifestyle or have become their lifestyle, just like me. Yes. I'm an owl. Yeah, <laughs> I work it, at night, I'm awake at night and, you know, just sleep during the day. Yeah. And, and it kind of reminds me of here in the United States, when we grow up in, you know, usually high school and our first jobs are usually like retail or food service in the Philippines, it's, it's cost. Yeah. It's working in call centers. And so that's where a lot of Filipinos, two things, they get a lot of experience making phone calls and, and building rapport over the phone and handling objections and then also they get used to working that graveyard shift. Like I, I never see any issues with virtual assistants, you know, falling asleep at work and so forth because they're used to it. And, and the good thing is it keeps them open with no distractions because they're working the graveyard shift. So yeah, that's, uh, that's interesting. So what, and also Mm -hmm. And also, you know, in terms of um, in, in relation to working in a call center, so this is somewhat, you know, a common question as well. So do, do the virtual assistant in the Philippines speak or speak um, great English? So, you know, the, the only answer that I give them that is pretty much subjective, but I hold high standards 
in terms of the English language. At the end of the day, what might be good to me might not be good to you in terms of the language. But right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But since, you know, um, these virtual assistants are used to speaking to, you know, American clients. Right. So, you know, there's a tendency that they have emulated the American accent or at least, you know, close to the American accent. Yeah, that, that's a question I get a lot is do they have accents? And and there are some virtual there are, you know, mm -hmm. there's Filipinos that have thick accents. We just don't yeah. hire those if they're going to be making phone calls. If yeah. they're going to be making phone calls, they're very articulate. I mean, you sound like an American. Nobody would know, you know, if they you made a phone call, they're going to think you're sitting in your office. And so, yeah, that's another common question. Um, how do you, let's say you're a loan officer, you get a virtual assistant, how do you pay them? Hmm. So um, there are a lot of platforms that's available in the market. Um, there's PayPal, number one. So that's the most common platform to send money to the Philippines. And no, we don't have Zelle or Venmo here. Right. So that is not an option. Um, we also do wise transfer or wise.com, W I S E.com. Um, we also have Remitly. And if you want a list of those platforms available in today's market, and then our team can send it to you for your reference. Yeah, I use um, PayPal. It's the easiest, but I that leads and me to another question that a lot of people ask is are they w2 employees are they 1099 employees and no they're not they no. they are contract employees so what what we have the virtual assistant do is every two weeks they'll send us an invoice with their contract work that they accomplished and then we pay them direct so it's it is uh it, they're not true employees but to the virtual assistant of course they are they're part of the mm -hmm. team and you want to treat them like everybody else that you have on your team. So mm -hmm. that um, that's an interesting thought. And another question, or did you want to comment on that before yes, I move um, on to another? Yes, um, thank you for pointing the interval. So again, you pay your virtual assistants every two weeks. So that is a standard. So every other Friday via PayPal or other platforms that's available in the market that is acceptable here in the Philippines. And um, however, some clients would prefer 5th and the 25th or 15th, the 30th, uh, whichever is going to be, you know, more convenient for you. And depending on your company as well, because there are loan officers who would reimburse um, the costs of hiring a virtual assistant. So that would depend as to what their company payout is or payout interval is. Nice. Every time is a standard. Yep. Perfect. And by the way, I also want to add, so um, typically not everybody um, would have the room of hiring a full-time virtual assistant. But when I say full-time virtual assistant, that would mean 40 hours per week or eight hours per day. So typically clients can go from 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. So totally depending as to what's going to be more feasible for your business. But, you know, if we have to work together, we need 10 hours per week, or at least that is the guaranteed hours. Even so, for example, hey, Gerard, I, just, uh, I would just need five hours. It doesn't matter for as long as the guaranteed hours to the virtual assistant is 10 hours per week, even if you're going to do it yourself. Because at the end of the day, for 10 hours, that's really the bare minimum, Right. So chances are virtual assistants would still be looking for opportunities, you know, that's offering more hours right. if you had to offer below 10 hours per week. Yeah. I, I've always liked to hire full time because there's plenty to have them do. Um, but you, but definitely loan officers do hi, have us hire or help them hire somebody that is part time. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really up to each individual to, decide how mm -hmm. many hours they want so and, mm -hmm. and also you know you may ask um do they work weekends so yes they do and sometimes they don't so that would totally depend as to you know what's going to be your agreement because you know virtual assistants are people too <laughs> right and, you know would would really enjoy the weekend realistically so we've had 
you know, clients who's kind of like doing some offer, like, you know, once a month, they have to work on a weekend instead. Right. And that's, that's a case by case basis. And mm -hmm. it's all agreed upon up front. So yeah, the expectations are there. So, so typically regular or the normal is really, um, you know, Mondays or Fridays. We've had clients would want to have the virtual assistant work like Tuesdays to Saturdays, maybe once a month. Right. Or we also have clients is having the virtual assistant work for 12 hours per week and just working Mondays through Thursdays. No right. Fridays. Yep. So another question a lot of loan officers ask is how do we communicate with the VA? How What systems do they use to make phone calls and things like that? Mm -hmm. Well, there's a lot of platforms. Number one, Zoom. <laughs> yep. They can communicate through Zoom. They can communicate through Skype, S-K-Y-P-E, or Monday.com or Slack.com. And we've also had clients who's well-versed with Facebook Messenger and would want to stay but then Facebook Messenger, so they just use the Messenger to communicate. And so and outbound Google, calls, do they Google. use phone burner? Do they use Skype or can they, those are kind of yeah. the different options. Yeah, Spring Central, if their company already has it, um, phone burner, Skype.com, dialpad, grasshopper.com. And if you guys would also want a reference, you know, um, our team can also send you the list of available dialers in today's market. Perfect. Yeah. Cool. So, so a lot of other loan officers ask a question, you know, how do I know they're working? What's your mm -hmm. thoughts on that? Yeah. So I think there are two ways. Um, as, as you said it, Richard, you know, it's all about the results. So, um, Virtual assistants are kind of like this is the I mean this is the standard um, operating procedure that as uh, just like any other employee, you know, virtual assistant is expected to check in with you at the start of their shift. So maybe around nine, around eight, you know, the virtual assistant would send you an email or send you a message that you know they're starting their day. Yep. And then you know, making a, a making themselves available all throughout their shift. So if if you're wanting to call them, that's fine. If you're wanting to you know, do a video call, that's fine. And they're expected to respond to you on a timely manner, not two hours later, not three hours later. Right. And so at the end of the day, they're expected to do some accountability report or the end of their report where, you know, they have to detail everything that they've covered all throughout the day. For example, if they're doing some phone calls and then might as well, you know, quantify those calls. It's either the total number of calls per day, the number of appointments that's being set, the details of the appointments, um, the number of live calls, the number of dead numbers, and the number of voicemails. So, yeah, yeah, I really like, I really like managing people in general, regardless of who's on the team, but kind of managing by results. And mm -hmm. if you're getting the results that you need, um, that's really all that matters. But having that end of day report is great too, because at the end of the day end of the end of their shift, they tell you all the details of what they accomplished. Um, one thing that I'll point out for, to loan officers is you want to make sure they, you give some sort of quota or expectation. So hmm. if they're going to call two hours a day, setting appointments, um, then you have to have an expectation that they schedule at least one to two appointments a day. Or, you know, an expectation of how many appointments you want set for the week. Um, mm -hmm. And then, and then you know, what else are you going to have them do? It's not just making the phone calls and scheduling the appointment. It's also setting up in Calendly, making sure the reminders go out, making sure that the agents do show up to the meeting. So having an SOP and standard operating procedure um, really helps. And for for anybody listening, that's another document or a set of documents that we can send you are a bunch of uh, SOPs that we've put together for different strategies and different projects that you're going to have your virtual assistant do. Mm -hmm. And for clients, it's really one thing to have like 100% peace of mind. And then, you know, they can opt for timedoctor.com, T-I-M-E-D-O-C-T-O-R.com. 
But sometimes, you know, basing on the feedback, uh, feedback of other virtual assistants that, you know, they feel uncomfortable, you know, having that platform because, you know, it takes screenshots randomly any time of day. <laughs> yeah, that's, the day. So, I, that's something I've <laughs> never used. Yeah, I've never used it because, again, you know, you like any employee or any team member, you learn to trust and then you're managing by results. So um, I, I've just personally never had to use that or never wanted to because I, I want the results. I will mm -hmm. say the biggest mistake loan officers make um, when hiring a virtual assistant is getting the wrong person and then holding on to that person. That's why I think, you know, of course you can go out and try to find your own virtual assistant. You can go to onlinejobs.ph. You can look around and try to find somebody, but that's where remote assistant scout comes in because we ensure that you're going to get the right person, the right fit. And so that's, uh, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Hmm. Oh, yeah. So um, if you guys really want to do it on your own, that's 100% fine. And, you know, you can just visit onlinejobs.ph or maybe upwork.com. There's a lot of talent out there, um, Filipinos, Jamaicans, or, you know, um, other um, nationals, depending as to what's going to be more feasible for you. And um, that's the thing about our service, Remote Assistant Scout, because, you know, not or no system is perfect, right? However, yep. it doesn't work with your current virtual assistant or with a virtual assistant that you hired. And then you have a peace of mind that you have your own team backing you up in case this happens. That's where we come in and, you know, doing the replacement for you. Because, you know, we've encountered um, clients have hired like do it yourself DIY hiring before and yet, you know, they've been hiring for five times already. It's very time consuming. So um, that's where we came in and, you know, help them out. So the pr practicality of it and as well as, you know, um, saving yourself some time. Definitely. And I guess being in the business for 11 years, um, five years working as a mortgage virtual assistant, and then six years doing this outsourcing, I can call myself like, you know, an expert in terms of finding. Definitely. Mortgage yeah, you're definitely an expert in finding the right people. Mm -hmm. This is our niche. I was a virtual assistant. My boss was a mortgage lender. So it is my area of specialty, really. Yep. <laughs> That's great. And we're out of time. So what, is there anything I forgot to ask you? Um, let me see here. Anything you want to touch on at, at the end here? Yeah, I, I think that's pretty much everything. But if you guys want to know more about our service and, you know, how our team can help you out, or just basically, if you want a pep talk about virtual assistant and then just visit remote assistantscout.com um, for more details or to schedule your no obligation virtual assistant strategy call and our team will be there and on standby to reach out to you and schedule this. Yep, that's perfect. Yeah, and, and uh, just a no obligation strategy call. You can find out more, answer any questions, things that maybe we didn't talk about today we have that at remoteassistantscout.com so awesome all right gerard it's been great having you here thank you so much for this opportunity i really enjoyed it and i hope you guys learned something from this and you know you just really need to contemplate on you know working your goals this year getting more freedom by you know hiring a virtual assistant nice awesome okay talk to you soon gerard thank you